you know, depression is really a white folks' word. Um, we were born before the depression, so when depression came, it was just a word. Uh, it wasn't like, you know, everything was okay and then something happened. Remember, when you talk about depression, that was people that were losing things that had things. You know, how you say, uh, um, I have a financial problem, the check haven't arrived yet, and then the other person have a financial problem, there are no checks coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so when you stop and think about what happened during the Depression, <clears throat> many poor folks who was renting was put out the house because the people that owned the house, you know, was caught up in the financial mind because them being realtors. That's how the Communist Party got started big in New York City. People would be put out the house and then the comments would come and put them back in. So it had nothing to do with ideology. And that's why that's why they've always been strong on the East Coast. And so consequently, uh, nothing changed. I mean, uh, a, a, a gallon of milk costs like a nickel. Uh, a, a loaf of bread costs a penny. And if you got it a day old, you could get it for free. And so consequently, that, that was just a word uh, to, to black folks and originally uh, segregated pattern that you didn't know about. Born and raised in St. Louis, you didn't see white folks. See, we didn't have a system where, you know, white folks sit downstairs in the movie and black folks sit in the balcony. You had white movies and black movies. Was yeah. your family poor, economically poor? Yeah, but see, you, you didn't, you see, now we can sit and say, you know, that the family was poor, but nobody discussed that because everybody was locked into the same conditions. I, I guess my aspirations was to be a streetcar driver. Uh, but that Why was child. That? that was child's mm -hmm. uh, play because, you know, we didn't know, you, you weren't aware that Negroes couldn't drive streetcars. It never dawned you on people's driving streetcars was white folks. That was like, that was like the, the, the highest your mentality could take you uh, because nothing else uh, seemed to be fascinating. I see. So despite the fact that within the segregated black community where you had people who were professionals in terms of being teachers or doctors or lawyers and then those who provide services yes. probably for those people, right, yeah. that you still wanted to be a streetcar driver. Yeah, because remember, no, no, remember, yes, okay. at that time, about 81% of white folks didn't finish high school. I see. Okay, so it was an educational thing. When you see black folks my age, what you will see them on their hand is a high school ring because it was something. When you think about 91% of black folks back then didn't finish high school. So to finish high school, so when you saw a doctor or a lawyer, you're talking about college. Well, if you didn't have money, if it cost you money to go to high school, you couldn't have gone. So it wasn't a matter of an aspiration because of them. They weren't role models for us because in order to get there, you didn't have the means to get there. And you but knew you that. did know digging a ditch mm -hmm. was a good city job. You did know driving a streetcar that it changed the buses was a good city job. Probably the best job you, you could have if you worked in the post office. One of the horrors, uh, now that I look back as a father and a parent and realize that back then the amount of Negroes that couldn't read or write, the school system left no leeway for that. They would still send you home with homework. Um, most parents that couldn't read or write that was never discussed with the children. And so, particularly a father who couldn't read, and if you as a child would walk to this father, they would have to attack you about something you didn't do, and that's the only way they could get out of not reading to you. The humiliation of my child knowing I can't read. And so, I would have to do something to intercede between the time I see you approaching with that book. 
The other thing is, it was the norm to have your lights cut off for not paying the bill or no heat in the house. There was never no leeway left for that. How can I do homework in a cold house? How can I read when there's no lights on? So what kind of a student were you? Well, you was a student of, if you was in my class and, um, and your father was a doctor, then everybody in there was in love with you. And, and so when the teacher get close to the G's, when they call you to spell a word, and uh, like hospital, and right before she would call me, you know, you would get up and curse her out and call her a bunch of dirty, ungodly names because you'd rather for the world to know that you call this teacher this bad name than for the world to know that you can't read, especially the little girl that was sitting there who you was in love with. And so it was just, it was just told, that's how the poverty, you know, caught up with you. That's how it hooked up with you. And little things that you didn't know what it was. You had no idea of that. And then there were things you could do in these Negro high schools that would, that would totally go unreported. You could come to school with a gun and nobody would dare report it because remember with three Negro high schools you had ten black folks that qualified to be principal at any given time and so it got to the thing that the horror stories never got reported downtown because they would be led to believe that the white folks would think that you all can control the good Negroes within somebody else and so you had all of that plus the overcrowded conditions uh, I went to a Sumner High School a school built a hundred years before I got there for 500 white folks and we had 8,300. And so we had classes so huge that by the time the teacher finished calling the roll, you had five minutes left. I or see. you had an English class next to a band room. And so you can't hear anything because the band is, is playing. And so it was those in the hallway Long before I got to New York, when I got to Manhattan once, it was like being in my high school, walking down the street at 12 noon on a nice day in Manhattan. It was that crowded in our high school. Had people on their way to class and, and going to class. If you wanted to go to the, the women's room or the men's room, it might be an hour wait uh, to get in. And so that was kind of like the mix uh, when I was born. We didn't, we didn't worry about being lynched. Uh, we heard about lynchings, 